starches, sugar, fiber, they're all carbs. But fiber, on the other hand, is not even digestible and it slows down the absorption in your body. So it doesn't raise your blood sugar as much. So actually, they'll slow down the absorption so any other sugar or carb you're eating will be better handled by your body. Because your pancreas will have the time to deal with it if you have fiber in your diet. In order to find out the digestible carbs in a serving, you need to subtract the fibers from the total carb. If a cup of mixed vegetable, for example, has 10 grams of carbs and four grams of fiber, the net carb will only be six grams. This is important to know because higher fiber content will let you eat carbs without severe spikes in your blood sugar. Despite that, blood sugars might still spike pretty severely if you eat too many of the carbs, even if there's a lot of fiber in them. When it comes to those with diabetes, why is carbohydrate intake is so important, right? Think about the, the macronutrients such as carbohydrates, protein, and fat that gives you the energy. Well, carbohydrates by far the most detrimental to your blood sugar levels, like you know. That's because they are pretty much absorbed to your bloodstream, you know, they're broken down no matter what, what it is, sugar or carb, white pasta, white rice, and white bread. So all those whites, processed foods, they are high in glycemic index. So people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes, if their blood sugars are already high, they should definitely avoid eating bread, bagels, and all the refined flour products. This isn't limited to refined white flour-based items. The researchers actually found that the, even the gluten-free pasta, etc., they raise up your blood sugars and so forth. Another study, for example, indicated that people with type 2 diabetes and mental disabilities had actually a lower brain function after eating foods high in carbs. So if you're not feeling so sharp today after eating your beloved white bread, now you know why. When someone is not so sharp, they actually call them breadhead, literally in my country, in Turkey, where I used to live. Fiber content of these foods are extremely low, and as you know, the fiber reduces the risk of blood sugar spikes, etc. Now, interestingly, Italians and Italy, they make things a little differently than what we do in USA here. They use high fiber content in their food, they use olive oil, and they actually move their booties. So, they burn it off. As you must know by now, the Swapping out low fiber foods with the high fiber ones will lower your blood sugars for sure. Diabetics will also see a drop in their cholesterol as the fiber binds the cholesterol and as a result the insulin resistance goes down. What else the high fiber content do? Well, it improves your gut flora. There are a lot of like millions of diabetics out there. They won't give up on their bread. Bread is high in sugar, you know that. Wheat flour is commonly used to make that bread. As you eat, starch gets transformed to sugar, which means those two Two slices will cause your blood pressure to go to sky high within 30 minutes. If you think that the bread that is classified as a multigrain is healthy for you, think again. The term multigrain only refers to the fact that it contains just a variety of grains and it can be lacking in nutrients and fiber. Gluten-free breads might also pique your interest, but they are not any better either. How about the brown breads? Are they any good? Well, many brown breads actually contain a a lot of sugar uh, that are made simply with the brown food coloring to deceive you into believing that they are actually healthy. An avocado toast with a pumpernickel bread. So let's say you're choosing a bread. I would suggest just don't choose the white bread. You know that. You can go with the pumpernickel bread, Ezekiel bread, bread that has more fibers, you know, less net carbs. The more fiber you have, the less net carbs you have. So you can actually subtract fibers from the total carbs because those fibers are eliminating and creating less net carbs. Remember that more fiber the better on your bread and pumpernickel, I love pumpernickel bread and I think that's the best thing you can do. Now when you eat avocado, remember that avocado is fatty and healthy fat and that slows down the absorption, your blood sugar is not gonna spike. Even if you don't have diabetes, you should stay away from french fries. Why? Carbohydrate content in potatoes is high to begin with and the carbohydrates can make up up to 35 grams of a, just a medium potato with only two and a half grams of fiber. So after everything is said and done though, fries may do way more harm than just your raising your blood sugar. 
It's been proven that deep frying food and more carbs than they advertise. So it is best to consume a handful of products. Almonds, and for example, or a few low carb vegetables with an ounce of cheese that these or something actually when cause a lot of inflammation in your body. Meals. And, and if you can, can just stop snacks altogether. A ton of studies that. actually connected those high intake of fried foods such as french fries to heart disease and a bunch of other cancers. Now, Sweet potatoes are the greatest choice if you don't want to forego potatoes completely. So you can bake them and eat them in moderation, but here's a better option, parsnips, right? So the parsnips are good. Mashed parsnips look and taste similar to mashed potatoes and have lower amount of carb. Here's the tip of the day. If you're in love with sweet potato, boil them. When you boil, as long as possible, you are going to change the chemical structure of that sweet potato, preventing the blood sugar spikes. Yes, boiled sweet potatoes have a low to medium glycemic index as the boiling time is longer. For example, when boiled for 30 minutes, the sweet potatoes have a glycemic index around 46. But when boiled for only 8 minutes, they have a glycemic index of 61. So, people with diabetes may benefit from yogurt. But a completely different story unfolds when it comes to fruit flavored variations. In general, flavored yogurts are manufactured with non fat or low fat milk and contain significant amount of carbs and sugar. Approximately like 60% of calories in one cup of a serving of a fruit flavored yogurt come from sugar. Isn't that crazy? I'd rather stick with my high fat, plain, creamy Greek yogurt. And guess what? Faye is my favorite brand. It's super creamy. Here's another thing. Frozen yogurt is viewed as a healthier alternative to ice cream by many people. However, it is possible that it contains as much sugar as ice cream, if not more. So don't get deceived there. I would say choose plain whole milk yogurt instead of high sugar flavored yogurts that can spike your blood sugar and insulin and can harm everything that you're dealing with, your cholesterol, diabetes, and even your guts. These are almost as bad as white table sugar and like candies or cookies that are all pretty much the same. They are different type of sugar, but they're all sugar and they will raise your blood sugar. So they are all examples of natural sugars and they do not really have a lot of fiber. They're not like processed white sugars. They're a little bit better, but they're still significantly spike your blood sugar. So stay clear of them. People with diabetes may benefit from yogurt, but a completely different story unfolds when it comes to fruit flavored variations. In general, flavored yogurts are manufactured with non fat or low fat milk and contain significant amount of carbs and sugar. Approximately like 60% of calories in one cup of a serving of a fruit flavored yogurt come from sugar. Isn't that crazy? I'd rather stick with my high fat, plain, creamy Greek yogurt. And guess what? Faye is my favorite brand. It's super creamy. Here's another thing. Frozen yogurt is viewed as a healthier alternative to ice cream by many people. However, it is possible that it contains as much sugar as ice cream, if not more. So don't get deceived there. I would say choose plain whole milk yogurt instead of high sugar flavored yogurts that can spike your blood sugar and insulin and can harm everything that you're dealing with, your cholesterol, diabetes, and even your guts. So. Plain whole milk contains a lot less sugar, although it has some natural carbs, but it's a lot better than the flavored one. Beverages sweetened with sugar and people with diabetes should definitely avoid these. 12 ounce of can of cola, for example, has 40 grams of carbs, making them extremely high in sugar. And since most diabetics are sticking to like 30 to 40 or 50 grams of carbs at max per meal, depending on their gender and activity level, but 40 grams in a beverage is a lot. Another example of a sugar sweetened beverage like iced tea and lemonade has around 45 grams of carbs, a piece, a, a cup or something. Eight ounces of soda, for example, or an apple juice has 25 grams of carbs. Most of these are loaded with fructose syrup, which is linked to insulin resistance and diabetes. The studies actually suggest that people who consume these sugary beverages, their risk of diabetes increase, but also their fatty liver disease risk increases. 
On the other hand, drinking water with a wedge of lemon, which has only one gram of carb, is practically calorie free and is a far better superior option. Sugary drinks, high fructose content might actually cause belly fat that you don't want to have. They raise your cholesterol, they raise your triglyceride levels. All of these can be super dangerous. A diet including, for example, 25% of calories from high fructose beverages increases your insulin resistance and belly fat increase and metabolic rate will go down and eventually you will develop obesity and diabetes. It's best to avoid the sugary drinks altogether in order to keep your blood sugar levels under control and lower the risk of pretty much any disease that you can think of.